Uh, pretty much this is like a full-on abort mission. Good morning, beautiful people. This is a nice, like, gloomy day. We're supposed to actually have rain for the next, like, four days. I'll believe it. I'll believe it when I see it. So, today I'm going to take advantage of the cold temperatures uh, by working in the greenhouse. I got in here the other day uh, and started ripping out tomatoes. Actually, coming in here, there's a few more tomatoes uh, ripped out than I remember. Uh, it looks like I only have two left, maybe three. Something like that? Yeah, I see two tomahooks left. So I'm most of the way done ripping out these tomatoes. Then I'm gonna take out the weed barrier and then this space is ready for whatever I need it for. I'm ripping out the weed barrier so I can get in here and dump compost. I've got a whole bunch of compost up in the chicken, chicken run that is ready to come out. You can't even see the bottom two by four, maybe a little bit right there. I've got so much organic matter in this chicken run, I could probably fill up two of those compost rings. That compost is done, it's cooled down, like it's done. I need to pull that ring off and what would be nice is to let the chickens just kind of rake it all down and shred it even further. But for the most part, that compost is ready. So, you know, horse before the cart and all that, uh, I need to get the greenhouse prepped and ready. I need to get the compost out of there, put it in here, and then I need to build more compost. It's just a, it's just a, a process. So I'm gonna get in here, rip out these last couple tomatoes and start pulling all the hundred staples that hold the, uh, the fabric down. We gotta pull all these staples. So we gotta move some dirt. See the staple right there? Hook that cobra head on it, like that, and pull. Hook and pull. Hook it under there real good. You got it. Just put all the staples in the bucket, and Where is the bucket? it's over there on the other side of the citrus. The what? Table. Oh, it's outside the door. Outside the door. Where are the staples? Oh, staples. You gotta find them. And here's one. Yep. Oh, uh, no way. Here, 
get these last couple tomatoes out of here. So this greenhouse is a lot warmer than outside. Yeah, but you can see your breath in here. Because it's a cloudy day, it's kind of cold. If you listen, if it gets kind of quiet, you can actually hear it is kind of sprinkling right now. Uh, when it actually like full on starts raining, I have to go grab the bacon and take it out of the smoker. We smoked it probably half a day yesterday and it's been going about half a day today. Once we pull off the bacon, we'll just call it smoked enough. We're cold smoking it. It's kind of a multi-day process around here. I'll get it smoked, I'll put it in the fridge or the freezer, get it nice and cold and then slice it. Sometimes that spans a couple days, sometimes I can get it all done in one day, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Chances are if it does rain the next couple days, that'd be a good excuse to cut bacon inside because it's kind of hard to film out in the rain. We're gonna have a thousand tomato plants come up in here. Why? Because there are so many Tomato? bad, bad tomatoes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this one needs to come up first. It's crinkling. It is crinkling. When that market gets full. All right, so there's like 50 million crickets hiding under this thing. Uh, that's actually kind of encouraging, but terrifying at the same time. Crickets everywhere. I need to get like a rogue chicken in here. They would have the best day of their life. The only problem with that, like what that means, is if there's crickets in here, that also means that there's going to be pests. Uh, things that normally can't overwinter will be able to overwinter in here. All right, got my first piece of weed fabric up. I'm just gonna continue. I might move the citrus down here further. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to move them regardless to uh, get them off the weed fabric. But what I could do is I could actually pull up half of this and then put compost here. Staple. That's the first time I've ever heard anybody call a grub a trespasser. Grubs are trespassers. I think I'm gonna grab the wheelbarrow, wherever it is. Where is the wheel? Where is the wheelbarrow? Next to the chicken coop. Oh, that's right. It is next to the chicken coop. I'm gonna go grab some compost out of there, haul it down here. Uh, it really doesn't get much easier than that. I can just load it up, haul it down, pile it up, and it'll be here uh, in a few months when I need it. There's, there's no, that's my finger. Look, right there, there you go. Hork, just hork it down. There's one little one in there. Get it. There you go. Open it, open it, open it, open it. And close it. We have one duck. All right, getting into it, there is still actually a lot of like I don't know, I can recognize hay and leaves. For the most part, most of this compost is pretty broken down, but where they have trampled it and just turned it into a mat, usually what happens, bring a whole bunch of leaves and spent hay from the pigs up here, and it'll be real good. And then we'll have a big rain event and it just turns into a solid mat of muck. And everything underneath that mat that's on top 
stops composting and becomes anaerobic. So it looks like I'm probably, I'm gonna have to mess with this compost ring and I'm gonna have to uh, pull the sides off and let them rake it out and then I'm gonna have to come in here and get it. Now, I will say, if we do get rain for the next couple days, there's really no point in doing that because it's just gonna do what I just said. It's gonna get trampled on. Uh, they make you know mud right on the surface where they're walking. Everything below becomes anaerobic. The cycle repeats. Really, the, the biggest enemy of doing a chicken compost system is neglect. Like, if you let it become anaerobic, it stinks. Like, right now, it stinks in here. I need to get in here, get everything fluffed up, and back in a pile. A pile takes longer to compress than it does when it's, you know, six inches deep on the ground. So maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll just get in here, uh, and then I could pull the sides off this compost pile, get them to rake it out. It's, my day's not going uh, the way I was hoping it would. I was thinking I was gonna get a whole bunch of compost out of here, but by the looks of it, it's not gonna happen. I know I have a lot of bones in here that need to come out. Uh, I set all my bones aside and then we burn them and turn them into just, you know, uh, calcium for the garden. Uh, but I have a lot of bones this year. Seven pigs and a cow is a lot of bones. Gonna get a couple strapping young lads to see if we can lift this cage off. Uh, pretty much this is like a full-on abort mission. Uh, I just need to have the chickens just shred this whole pile and break it down, which they will gladly do. We got a whole bunch of bones and actually these ones are just kind of moldy and funky. So we're gonna take all of these over to the fire pit and burn them. So this is kind of killing two birds with one stone. I've got this old shelf that came out of the well house and it was half rotten and I've just been needing to burn it. Need to burn some bones. It ain't raining yet. So, two birds with one stone. That is a very hot fire. Uh, probably still not hot enough to convert all those bones into just, you know, just calcium dust. So usually what we do is we'll just put the bones at the bottom, then we'll have, you know, fire fried air, whatever we're doing. And when we're done, I'll come out the next day. And as long as you didn't like stir up the fire, the bones will still be, they still look like bones. They're just really white. When you pick them up, you can crumble them into dust. That's what I plan on doing here. There were so many of them, I'll probably have to burn more fire, or at least longer. So I'll add a few more bigger chunks of wood now that I got a nice bed of coals, but just letting this cruise, as long as it doesn't start raining, probably that'll be good enough. That used to be pine. Used to be, now it's basically compost in a strip. Compost in log form. Well, I'll just come over here and look at these beautiful raw chickens ready to go in the oven. Yeah, they are. I was like, hold on, hold on, let me get like a before shot. <laughs> Literally all I'm doing is covering them. <laughs> all right, had some lunch. My fire is nearly died down. I'm gonna go out there and stir it around. And Meg is making all the bread products. Yes. Ate some lunch. I don't see smoke, so it looks like my fire went out. I figured this was a good time. good time to check the bacon. A couple of them look very, very smoked, but the one up here on top doesn't look very smoked at all. 
feels kind of dry to the touch, which that's good. You can see how smoked the skin is. The skin is pretty smoked, but honestly for smoking for as long as these have smoked, they should be a lot more smoky looking. That one looks great. I mean, look at that bacon, beautiful. That one actually looks nice and smoked. I'm just gonna rotate those. Honestly, like they smell really, really smoked. Could be just a smoker, residual smoke, but like smelling my hand, that bacon smells very, very smoked. I'm just gonna run it just a little bit more. I'm gonna build my fire back up and I'll just go maybe, maybe another hour or so. Put them in the fridge, slice them probably tomorrow. It smells like bacon. I'm gonna go check the fire over here, maybe give it a stir, check on those bones, see if they have burned yet, or see if I'm gonna have to add more wood. Ooh, it is warm over here. All right, I see some bone. I don't know if that's been rendered down. That one actually kind of turned to charcoal, so that's okay. See how that just turned to powder? That's what I want. So, I'm just gonna take the stray pieces of wood, put them back on this pile of bones, make sure there's no pieces of bones that escape the fire. I'm just gonna kind of mound it all back up and just let it cruise. And once it's done, it's done. All of the ash will just pretty much disintegrate. And if I've done this right, then the bones will still be, you know, kind of a shape and I can pull them out of the ash throw them in a bucket, either blend them up or just step on them and crush them into dust. And then now I can add that to the garden. So I had to like kind of brag on Meg's no. bread braid, braid, braided bread, something like that. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thank like you. this is absolutely beautiful. And then the cinnamon rolls, look yes. how, oh man, <laughs> those are beautiful. Taters don't look beautiful They're yet, but beautiful they will yet. be. Yes. So chicken is in the oven, and I'm getting taters. We'll have that hollow bread and taters, and I might throw some carrots in here too. So we'll see. Sounds okay. good. And and yeah, regular bread. Regular bread. Well, I just had to come over here and brag on this. <laughs> Wanted to come over here and look at the potatoes. Yes, they're We're about up. halfway through. We're cooking these in our tallow that we rendered. Good potatoes. It does make for some bomb potatoes. potatoes. So I uh, I just chunk these up and then I put like dots or bits of tallow over it, stick it in the oven for like 30 minutes, and then I stir them and distribute all the, the wonderful grease and all that. And I don't season them until they come out because um, that helps them. The salt actually causes them to like steam more than fry. Yeah, it makes them mushy. Yeah, so we, we like salt crispy. them. Mm -hmm. Salt them after they come out. That's, that's a trick if you need a trick for potatoes. Buggy, uh, can you get me a big cookie sheet? Okay, close the door. Let's go get the bacon. All right, so I've been waiting for this uh, tiny, tiny fire to die down. There's still a little bit of smoke going on, but it's close enough. Like, I know, yeah, it's almost done. And I'm not gonna add more. Uh, I think I got like six hours yesterday and then I started this up at like 7.30 this morning and it is now, what is it, almost six o'clock. I would say this is as smoked as these ones are gonna get. So, this is exactly what I want. It's cool to the touch and very, very smoked. It's got good color. Yeah, you can see how smoked that is. So, it looks like mission accomplished. Look at that one, that is some good bacon. Could I see? Yeah, look. Ooh, that's gonna be good bacon. Now this one's the one I'm excited for. This is the thickest point on the bacon. Look how much oh. meat is on that. That is gonna be some good bacon. There we go. All right, let's go to the shed. Woo hoo hoo! This time Mama turns in here. That's where my thermometer went. You hid, you hid my thermometer from me. What's that? Bacon fits. What's, I just had to rearrange stuff a little bit. I'll let that bacon get nice and cold and then it can sit in here for a week if I end up not getting to it. It'll be fine in here. I'll probably cut it tomorrow or the day after. Bacon is a process. If you want good bacon, you gotta be willing to commit. Cinnamon rolls, 
get you guys later. Honestly, I feel like we should just rip off chunks of that bread and eat it like we're savages or something. I mean, I guess you could if you really... Let's see how many, how many, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just rip it apart like savages. Oh, okay. All right, ripping apart the chicken. Try and rip apart the chicken. And then, oh, where'd the taters go? Uh, oh, I put, popped it back in the oven for oh. a minute to heat them up. Dinner was fabulous. Uh, I could single-handedly kill that. What's it called? Hala. Hala. Mm -hmm. Hala bread. C H A L L A A. C H. A yes. C H. Like hala. Oh, okay. I couldn't. I thought you were just saying hala, like hala back. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've never heard of bread called hala okay, bread. Sorry. Uh, sweet braided bread. There you go. <laughs> I could eat that entire loaf. Yes. Or braid. Or thing. Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah. It was really good. <laughs> Potatoes are really good too. Yeah. Alrighty, that's gonna do it for us for today. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.